Hello. Today we are going to talk about how to solve this CCC problem from 2023, and it is problem one of senior, and it's called the、uh, it's called triangling. So notice that this is the first problem in senior, and the fourth problem in junior. So if you feel like you're struggling to solve this problem, maybe you should、uh, consider which contest to do. So、um, let's go into the problem statement. So Bakshi the builder,、uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, has just finished constructing her latest project, a pathway consisting of two rows of white equilateral triangular tiles. At the last moment, disaster struck, and she accidentally spilled black paint on some of the、uh, some of the tiles. Now she has to、uh, she has to purchase warning tape to block off the wet areas. Can you help her determine how many meters of tape she needs? The first triangle will point upwards, and any pair of adjacent tiles will point in opposite directions. Now.、Um, This problem, I think, they give you this visualization on the CCC, so it is、uh, easier to visualize this way than to go by this description. But anyways, this is a pretty simple、uh, counting problem. It's conceptually pretty easy, but you might have trouble implementing it because some parts are a bit annoying to implement. So let's see. So first we get the number of columns there are, and then we get the exact layout of the what is it called the pathway. That tells us、uh, which tiles have black paint on them. So here you can see this input. So this is the first row. So the first tile, around、um, the first tile is pointing upwards, and then one that points downwards. That is not covered, so it would correspond to this tile, and so on and so forth. So in total, we would just need to count. So、uh, each triangle has a side length of one meter. So we just count、uh, how many、uh, sides are exposed, essentially. So this one has three, this one has three, and this triangle has three. Each triangle has three, and there are three triangles of black paint. So in total, we need nine meters of tape. This becomes a bit annoying to implement when、um, when there are adjacent triangles. So you have to consider、uh, when triangles are adjacent to each other, then、uh, there are some、uh, sections of tape which are no longer necessary. So let's go、uh, with implementing this. So let's open up an editor. So and then. Um, so the first line has an integer c. So let's grab the input line by line, and then the next two lines have、uh, rows of integers, and each row has c amount of integers. In Python, we don't need to care about c exactly,、um, so we can just do、um, row one equals. List map int.、Uh, I think that's the correct number of brackets. No, I think there we go. So this basically, this statement basically、uh, grabs space separated integers and creates a list of all the integers in this row. So that is like a quick way to parse input if you're not familiar. And then let's grab row two. I am a bit suspecting the amount of brackets here, but okay. So there we have the two rows, and then we just basically want to iterate through、uh, each pair of triangles. So this this is indexed from one、uh, to c. So we basically you know have an index going from one to c, and then so hey so when i is one we process the first pair of triangles and the second pair and the third pair the fourth pair. So that's that's sort of like how we implement it. So 
Everything is zero index, remember, so we actually want to go from zero to C minus one inclusive. So uh, to do that, we just have to iterate for I in range C. And then for each index, we want to um, essentially accumulate an answer. So let's just create an answer variable. And then let's just check whether or not um, each row has black paint or each cell has black paint. So if the corresponding triangle in row one has black paint, so let's just do if, if this one is filled, then so each triangle we initially add three to our answer. So we actually add three to our answer. And then we check row two. So row two, if row two, if this triangle in row two is filled, then we, um, then we also add three to the answer. Now, hold on a second. So now we have to process this sort of case. So these, this pair of, I don't know if you, you can see my cursor, but this pair of triangles on the left, um, you can see if they are adjacent to each other, uh, this triangle used to have one meter of tape here. And the top triangle also used to have one meter of tape here. So after we've done this operations, we need to check if this, um, this sort of pair exists. And if there is, then exactly two meters of tape becomes unnecessary. So there used to be, if that makes sense, so the bottom triangle used to contribute one meter of tape here. And so does the top triangle. But given that this pair exists, then we actually want to subtract two from our accumulated answer because they are now unnecessary because these two triangles are adjacent to each other. Now, before we do that, we just want to quickly check whether or not our index is odd or even. So notice that the first, uh, so here in our iteration, i equals zero. So with the very first pair, hopefully you can see my cursor. So with the first um, pair, then this rule applies. So we want to check uh, if pairs sort of cause a problem and we have to subtract two from our answer. But with the second pair, you'll notice these triangles, if they were filled, um, and they aren't, but if they were filled, then nothing additional would happen. We would just add, uh, add six to the answer, three for each triangle. And we don't have to worry about, you know, redundant meters of tape. So we have to essentially check. Um, so for the ith triangle, we have to check if i is even or odd, basically. So here, our i uh, starts from zero. So you'll notice that, so this is zero, and then this is one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So you'll notice when i is even, then we have to check for, um, for this adjacency issue. So let's just do, if i uh, modulo two equals zero, so that just basically checks whether uh, i is even. And then we have another if statement. So if row one i and row two i. So if these triangles are both filled, then we actually want to subtract two from our answer. Okay, and then that handles the case where there are vertically adjacent triangles. Now we have to handle uh, when there are horizontally adjacent triangles. So what we basically want to do is when we're iterating, we want to check the triangle that is in front of us. So we're actually, you know what, we can do, so for each triangle, we want to check the triangle that is both behind and, so both the triangles that are behind and in front of us. And for each triangle that is uh, behind or in front of us, we have to subtract one from our answer. Because you see, if we're processing each triangle, so right now let's just focus on like, say this particular triangle, like the third triangle from the, or on the top side, then when we're processing this triangle, 
we're noticing that uh, on the right, there is another black triangle. So for the third triangle, we want to subtract one side. And when we move on to like process the fourth triangle, we'll check to the left and to the right of us again, and we'll notice the third triangle. So that's sort of um, how we process the uh, input as we're iterating to make sure that we're not double counting, if that makes sense. So let's just do. So if, um, if row one, I minus one, then, uh, okay, I forgot to put the if. So if the triangle to the left of us is filled, then we want to subtract one from our answer. And we also want to do this for row two. Answer minus equals one. And I think, so let me think. Yeah, I think we also have to add the condition that our current triangle is filled. So simply check the current triangle. And also we want to be careful of our indexing here. So here we're accessing i minus one. So notice how that'll present a problem when i equals zero. So we want to just add a condition here that i has to be greater than zero. Uh, okay. And then, so this is checking the triangles to the left of us. Now let's check the triangles to the right of us. So if i is smaller than, uh, smaller than c, I think this should be right. And then if row one, i and row one, i plus one, answer minus one. If row two, i and row two, i plus one. Uh, then answer minus equals one. I hope um, this makes sense how we're like subtracting unnecessary meters of tape from our answer after we initially add this uh, answer to our uh, to our solution. Let me just quickly. Okay, so I think this should be right. Um, and I realized that we're writing some redundant code here. So we're checking like the current triangle multiple times, but that's okay. I think the code is decently clean. So let's try running this and we made a typo somewhere. So let's try pasting. Okay, so I plus one is out of range. So if I is smaller than C, so this means i is allowed to be c minus one, and then if we check i plus one, then i will be c, which will be out of bounds. So I did make a mistake here. We have to go one lower than that. Now I think, okay, we did not print our answer. So print the, out the answer. Okay, so this works. And then let's check the uh, bottom case. So this one returns eight. So I think this should be correct. And now let's submit our solution uh, in PyPy because it's faster. And then let's see. So this should pass and there isn't really like a time issue in this problem uh, because the constraints aren't very large. So yeah, that is a correct solution to triangling, uh, I hope the solution made sense. I hope this code is clear. So yeah, thank you very much. Goodbye.